Here we go. Camera one on Jelani in three, two, one, dissolve. Grace Church family, can we stand together as we exalt our Lord and our King? How many are getting baptized at this service? Uh, only like, like Ready, five, take six. Thank you, Audrey. Ready, four, take. And there's only two testimonies. Nope, someone walked right in front of you, didn't they? <laughs> I saw that. Ready, one. Take one. Ready, two. Take two. Till I met you. I was breathing. I was breathing, but not Three, four. did not come out the way that I heard it. <laughs> did not, yeah. I heard that so wrong. I heard it too. Take four. I'm sorry. I don't know what I said. It's okay. We love this Sunday. We love this. this is a baptism Sunday where we get to celebrate Why? people making the de declaration that they're following Jesus and they came out of that grave when he called them, like when Jesus called Lazarus. Amen? It's a, such a blessing Man, to be with you. All. My name is Jelani. I'm one of the worship pastors here. Maybe you can turn to someone and greet them in the name of the Lord. All right. Ready? Three, Maggie. Dissolve. Okay. Looking for Jonathan and Marianne. One. Two be prepared. One to two o'clock. There you go. Coming up on the left. To the left, to the left. Good eyes. All right. And dissolve. 
I don't think. Hey, really glad okay, to have I was like, I had a mic on. It was really quiet. I'm ready for his lower thirds. Long time. Yep. And flying. We just celebrated to, uh, Doris Wolf's birthday. She's 98. She's been coming to Grace and since I think the 70s. Oh, yep. You know what, Maggie? Zooming on out. Today, this might be your first day. I'm really glad you came. And uh, we no, have we stand up. Oh, she's probably back. not there at Everybody that service, though. No, I don't, I don't think, think so. Oh, okay. I feel like you're going to set up by now. Just sort of let us know you're here by okay. either the little... Uh, okay, ready QR for the, the announcement rest, slides? Go to our website, gracecma.org, and click the I'm new button. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to send you a note, tell you we're so glad you came today. So this is for all my girlfriends, the ones that I know, and the ones that I don't know. Next Tomorrow slide. night is Ladies Latte. Woo! <laughs> we would love for you to come. I'll be there with... 350-ish other women, and we would love for you to come join us. It's a great time to meet people and to grow together in our in our, uh, in our our faith. So come on out tomorrow night at 7. There's lots going on with women's ministry. You can check that out on the website. I'll mention just one more thing. We at Grace are co-hosting a simulcast coming up at the end of the month. It's called Rise Up, and it's a good opportunity to Beat invite to some friends to watch that live stream with you and be yeah, inspired you. and encouraged together. One of the ways that uh, a lot of people here have had questions answered, the big questions of life, alpha. is through a uh, safe discussion group called Alpha. Do you have the Alpha site? Alpha, yeah, alpha is it. used around oh. the world in all kinds of I'm different like, settings. I'm like, like to see it before, but I languages. get it. Dozens of languages. And we do a couple of Alpha courses a year, and what you do is you have often a meal, sometimes without, but you'll be around the table and you'll talk about, like, why am I here? Where, where do we go when we die? Can I trust the Bible? How do you know God in a personal way? And, and it's meant to be a place where there's like a judgment-free, ask-any-question kind of place. We're starting a new series in April, and we're looking for more table leaders. And maybe you say, you know, that sort of piques my interest. Two weeks from today, February 25th, there's going to be a table leader sort of informational gathering. If you think, you know, I might be interested in that, check that out. Just register so they can have enough food uh, for the gathering, and they'll answer any questions you might have. could be a really cool way to make an impact. If you are a young adult between the ages of 18 and 30, I guess we're a little bit past that. Just a little. <laughs> the young adults here group here is just a great time. If you're single, if you're married, whatever your season of life, they would love for you to come on Wednesday nights. And they're getting ready to do a retreat at the beginning of March. That would be a great way to get to know people, to grow in your faith. Just if you could register for that, that by the John is working now? by Leap Day, yeah, uh, and then they'll have a spot for you waiting. Yes. Yeah, did you mention yes. we have a table in the lobby today as well? Yeah, right outside there for young adults. And then March 3rd, well, there's a lot happening. You can check our calendar, web calendar uh, for different events. But one thing we have happening is called Vision Sunday. I think you could brighten up too a little more, Sunday. but you don't have to do and it right now. But I think morning and just, uh, say, it would How hurt. can all of us be uh, yeah. on mission together with what God has for us? And that evening we'll have our annual meeting. And even if you're brand new at Grace, you don't have to be a member. You can come and find out like what's happened the last year. Where are we going as a church family? You can, there'll be a time of Q&A. You can ask any question you want. Members will have an opportunity to vote for uh, elder candidates. Uh, elders are the team of uh, volunteers that sort of give overall direction to our church. I report to them, and they're a great group. Uh, and so you'll see like you just did that. Uh, the candidates coming up fast. in the next few weeks. But that's March 3rd, and again, we're going to be doing a dinner this year with that, just a you know, simple dinner. Like January free, and February you go, usually go really slow, and I feel like March we zoom I agree one. Everybody I've talked to said the same thing. Screen. You know? There's some kind of like. They're gonna do the Go Week. They usually do the Go Week in March, don't they? Yeah, it's going to be talking about. So you at can the put end the next slide out. There's gonna be a lot of people who are Thank celebrating, you. right? I see really, it. so and then some people who are not so excited about what happened. But this morning, we get to celebrate together something that's so much greater than any sporting event. So incredible! It's one of my favorite Sundays at Grace. Pastor Jelani mentioned today is Baptism Sunday. And we're going to be celebrating between our services with 22 Easter, people who are there. saying, Jesus oh, two weeks loves before. me. Maybe it's two weeks. And I so want to spend my uh, life following him. A, so I'm so glad you're here to yeah, celebrate yeah. with us. I don't know. Easter, Easter being so early is really throwing me for a loop. In the slide loop, it was. Okay, Maggie, can you go a little bit wider? Pledge of Allegiance, and a commitment to Jesus. I think you're good, Jeff, where you are. Uh, Mary mentioned the big game tonight. I don't, well, there's six uh, people, so maybe you'll need to widen out the shot a little. And if they're rooting for a particular team, um, like, really seriously, we'll be able to tell because what are they going to be wearing? A jersey, right? I'm going to be wearing mine. A Cleveland Browns, you know, kind of, you know, that's who I'm rooting for. And <laughs> I don't do any good. <laughs> but that jersey is an outward symbol of an inward devotion, right? on a very earthly, simple scale. 
But baptism, at the very core of who we are, baptism is an outward symbol of this inward commitment to Jesus, that we say, Jesus, I, I owe my life to you. I've given myself to you. And, and, that, uh, and I want to declare publicly. It's not great churches. We didn't invent this. This okay, is something in the Bible. Okay, we have two testimonies, and, and for every person who decides to follow Jesus, that they go public the through baptism. You might yet. wonder, why that I one's baptize not going to happen. Should I get baptized okay. again? Yeah. We would say yes. He came down and said that Because when you were baptized as a baby, oh, got it. how much were you a part of that decision? What percent? Maybe like zero, right? Uh, your parents <clears> wanted something for you. But now that you've come to a place of saying, you know what? I, I'm giving my life to Christ. I recognize my need for him. Uh, that's when the Bible uh, talks about baptism for people who understand what they're doing. They're conscious of it. And so you can say, Mom and Dad, thank you for what you wanted for me. And now I'm, I'm making this a public and a personal stand and just declaring to the world that I belong to Jesus. So when I go under the water, I've, I've died to my old way of living, coming up out of the water. I'm acknowledging that because of Jesus, I have new life. And, and, and I belong to him. So if you're interested in being baptized, May 19th is our next one. But I'm going to welcome those getting baptized Bring them up. in this Bring service. Them up. Come on up. Ready. Thank you for being Are here. Uh, really happy for you guys. Bring them up. Bring them up. Ready, three, take. There We're going to have two of them share how they came to a place of putting their trust in Christ. All the way over, friends. Wonder, All the way over. <laughs> Go ahead. Push them over, Josh. Don't, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Usually there's somebody up there helping so them along. Someone is up for doing that. We welcome ready, them. If you'd rather one, not, you, take, ready, you don't two. Have to say anything at your, at your baptism. We're going to have two testimonies today. Thank ready you so two, much. Take you guys, two. Whoever's going to go, you going first? All right. All right. Ready, ready two, ready. take. Ready, one, take. All right. Well, my name is Johnny Morales, and I'm here with you today as a reborn child of God. Johnny Morales. Throughout my entire life, yep. I felt like there was not something him. missing inside of me. For the past seven or eight years, like many, I have struggled with severe anxiety, depression, and bipolar disorder. I've never felt close to God. If anything, I've always pushed him away, especially through high school. Many times I attempted suicide and would cut myself and do self-harm. I cried myself to sleep most nights, praying for God to not let me wake up so that I can stop suffering in this life. Over time, it got worse, and some days I thought it would never end. And I would feel this way forever, and there was no way out. There would be no way to, to make me happy. I would always ask God, why did you make me this way? I would pray, but no answers came to me in the ways I wanted them to. There were times after that I asked myself, there is there even a God looking out for me? If so, I would he let me feel this, feel like every day would be my last. The only thing that saved my life was my dog. I planned to overdose so I wouldn't wake up. At that moment, he came and rested his head on my lap as I sat crying on the bathroom floor. From that moment, I stayed for him and him only. I remember when I finally started feeling God's presence in my life, a co-worker who became, quickly became a great friend told me about a gospel story that made me feel like God can fill this hole in my heart that I've been trying to fill on my own. Minister Joyce Meyer truly opened my eyes even more while reading her book. It made me me realize how much God does love me and his plans for me are so much more than I imagined. She helped me realize that most problems won't resolve immediately, but will all unfold into something even better. There is always a blessing at the end of each trial God puts us through. And in the end, it will all be worth it. Believe and trust in him and he will deliver for you. God has filled the missing piece in my heart and in return, I've given my life to him. I'm going to go cry really quick. I'll be right back. Right. Take one. Hi, I'm Doris Locklear. Doris. Um, April 21st, 2022 was the start of my recovery journey for compulsive gambling. I was introduced to Making Peace and Beyond to help find hope and healing in my personal issues. Little did I know that having faith in Jesus wasn't enough. Something was blocking my path to a relationship with Jesus and other people. During this weekend's retreat and workshop, I had to address the guilt and shame of my past. I was overwhelmed. How do I move beyond my pain? We continued with the program weekly, using our workbooks, sharing and discussing topics, forming a fellowship with others in similar paths. I decided to attend service one Sunday, and the minute I entered, I just, I knew I was where I was meant to be. 
Church service led me to Keys to Recovery, another place that I instantly knew God was guiding me on the right path. I bought my first Bible, a recovering Bible, joined Grace Church after attending Grace 101. I, I attended a women's Bible study, took a few other classes, became involved in volunteering, all while having a spiritual journey in recovery. And now I'm here to praise God Aww. for saving me and declaring my alliance to Jesus Sweet. Christ. Ready to? Wow. Take two. Ready one looking for Jonathan? Take one. Aren't you grateful we have a God who's a healer and is just so patient with us? Uh, beautiful. Ready to? Johnny and Doris, thank you for sharing your story. All six of Two's you up. could. And we just, we're so thankful for each of you. You probably have, like, maybe some family or friends who are here. If, if you're a family member or friend or you've been in a uh, small Maggie, group wide. with one of these six people, would you wide, just stand wide, a wide. second? Because it's a big you. day for you. We'd love to right, just right. honor you as well. Okay. Right. Wonderful. Right. Wow. Yep, yeah, slow pan to the right. You got it. Thanks, man. I raised three a little bit. Yeah, Fantastic. Well, we're so thankful. 21, you might be a little bit nervous. Take. I was very Thanks, nervous Maggie. the day I got baptized. Yeah, and and so, but this is a, a banner day. Like this is a milestone marker because you're honoring Jesus. So, two questions: Have you come to the place in your life where you've said, I, "I can't make it to heaven on my own. I, 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 can't, I can't be acceptable to God, but I have invited Jesus to come into my life and to forgive me." Have you taken that take step? Two. And is it your desire that by the power of his spirit living within you, that you'll follow him all the rest of your days? Ready, one. Way to go. Take. Um, we're going to be praying for you all right. and, and celebrating together, giving praise through singing to the one who Jelani's gave his life to the next for song. us. Congratulations. All right, stand by. Scoochie. Ready, three. And take. Dissolve. <coughs> Keys are up. All right, going to Jelani. Yeah, we stand together right. as we adore Jesus. Oh, Take one. Thank you. One. Ready, five. Two. Take five. Come on, you sweet. Uh, acoustic if you can, Audrey. Come to Ready, four. The well that never runs dry. Ready, one. Drink Take. of the water. Come and thirst no more. Ready, two. I really wish we could hide that exit sign. I know, right? I mean, I know legally we can't, but rats. Ready, one.
ready to go ahead and start your move. Take two. Beautiful. Ready for? Hold on, Audrey. Start that over. And when the music drops, no, and take one is dropping. And then Doris, thank you. That's Doris. Yeah. Ready, six. Okay. Take six. Ready for next. There you go. Yay. Good job. Good job. Start your move. Take four. Bring all your Bring your Ready one. Take. Okay, we're looking for Johnny now. Johnny will get it next. And then we'll have a couple more Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Yep. Ready three. Take. And the angels cry. Holy, all creation. Come on, if you know this, sing it. Oh, you are lifting high. I'm already there. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people. Hear your people say. Holy to the King of Kings. Ready, three. Start a slow up hand to the left. Take three. You will always be. Oh, hello, hand. Holy, holy forever. For you holy are you, Lord God Almighty. I would rather have a hand instead Great of a head. Mighty, True. Lord, we adore you. Ready to take. Thank you, Jesus. Ready six. Take. A thousand generations falling down in worship. Is this the last one? The song no, no. Of Second to last. Jennifer will be the last one. Okay. Yes, Lord, to the Lamb. All who've gone before us. All who will believe will sing the song of ages. Good job, man. Ready to? Jennifer, your name the last one. Two. is the highest. Yes, your name remaining. is the greatest. Your Ready name for? Ready one, take. Ready four. All who will believe, we declare. Take four. All those and the minions. Ready six. All place, Jennifer. And take six. By the time that was done, she wasn't thinking anymore. So. Ready, one, take. Good job, everyone. Ready, five, take. Ready, three. Take three. Ready, four. Take four. Ready, two. like a hand in front of the camera looks so much better than a head. <laughs> yeah, 
ready to take. There you go. Ready three. Tilt up. Take three. Nice. Ready four. Take four. Oh no, he's running back and forth. Ready two. Take two. Do you declare that and believe that? All flows and for me. Ready one. Take and positions your name. Stand three. Maggie, all the way wide for me. Yeah. Ready, three, take. Ready, four, take. Thank you. Ready, two, take two. Ready, three, four, but look at all the hands. Take three. Oh, that's amazing. Ready, four, take. You are killing it out here, man. I know. Take two. Don't do it. I know. I know Davis doesn't like it. I just like to sneak it in sometimes. It's such a pretty shot if the lights aren't too bad, you know? Right now. Yeah. I don't know. There's some of us that have been pent up a bit. I just like seeing everything. Holding on to I think if it was a different angle, and sometimes I would like our it better. bodies have to physically do what we don't want to do mentally. Or if there was a lot in more order for the peace of, of God to come. Moment. Yeah, I've used, I've snuck it in like during a light change. For freedom in Jesus yeah. to come. Yeah, I can see that. Or when we had like an altar call so and there an were a ton of, of people at the front. That's a great idea too. As an offering to Jesus, if you want to release some things to Jesus, would you lift both hands to the heavens right now? Ready, three, take. Wow. It's only if you want to release Back something to him. It's amazing. If you want to give something to him, Maybe thoughts, lighten that up a little anxious yeah. thoughts. Yeah, kind of get the crowd in there. Just three? Yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of. You will always wow. be ready one. Holy. Yeah, head back to the stage, Maggie. Holy forever. I wish it worked. So you people are surrendered. Ready one. That's a really great. And Lord of all oh, the earth, love it. we Thank you. shout your name, shout your name, feeling up the uh, sky. Jeff, go wide and slow and zoom into Jelani. Yeah, ready two. Go, two's up. We love to shout your name, oh Lord. See your people surrender, Lord, we sing to you. Singing, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name. Filling up the skies with endless praise. Release it to your Father. There we go. Ready, three. Take three. We love to shout your name. It's a little trick I can show you after. I was gonna say it's a good one. Singing, Lord of all the earth, Lord of all. Nice. I'm sticking with you, Maggie, so you can even start panning back the other way, whatever. Uh, Audrey, tight on uh, Jelani, if you can, Meg. We love to shout your name, oh Lord. Just your voices declare one more time, sing the Lord of all. Lord. Wow. That's beautiful. I think this is the service.
service we need to use. Yeah. I'm going to give it to him right there. The right there. Ready, one. Yes, Lord. Ready to. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Dissolve to one. Yes, Lord. All right. We awesome job, you. Maggie. We adore right, you. We're going to have a video. We adore you. We what honor you. This is the game. Okay. When we've come to the end of ourselves, you're always there. Yeah. Great and mighty Father. Thank you, Lord. Some of us have turned to people. We've turned to friends. Okay. It just gets noisy. We've turned to habits, Lord yeah. God. But thank noisy. you. That he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Stand by for a bumper. Thank you, Lord, that we can turn to you. Great and mighty Lord, we surrender to you. Would you enrich us with your word today? Would you transform us by your anointing, by your Holy Spirit? Would you change us to be the people that you've called us to be? Or would you give us ears to hear what your word has to speak to us today? In Jesus' name, amen. Three, two, one. One and two to two o'clock. All right. Yep. That's what we're looking for, Jonathan, on camera one. All right, lady. Tied to you. Thank you. Take your keys down. Take your key down. Hey, can for I just his say lower thank third? you for reaching out to others. Uh, we're one church, three campuses, oh. and a lot of you engaging online as well. But we have a campus in Olmsted Falls and one in Lorraine Correctional in Middleburg. Not and too much. I just keep on hearing stories like Johnny up here. Here Johnny okay. said, yeah. yeah, what a power. I love all the testimonies today. <clears throat> wow. And he said, uh, can you bring I two up a little bit for me? Reached out to me. Okay, and, and then we're going to, our first slide is going to be a uh, third of the a screen. A different person who this it's week, be Kathy. sent out first impression surveys to any newcomer at Grace and just say, hey, how can we do better? What did you find meaningful, et cetera? So this one was, what were your first impressions of Grace? He says, I began attending in September 2023 with a friend. This is what he skipped. I noticed a change <laughs> yep. in him and realized this is where I it needed to you. explore more. All right, Jeff, I'm going to use you here. Ready to, to grace and it once my he life. does is done I'll reading this the before we get what into the uh, I'm learning slide so much frenzy. and appreciating God's grace. I feel welcomed as part of your community. Ready to take. Um, one of the big factors, he said, I noticed a change in my friend and realized I needed to explore more. It's the power of living a contagious life, right? That just makes people ask questions and you go, uh, and then as you have opportunities, somebody goes, hey, what makes you tick? Or what is it about you? Are you, even in crisis, you're, you sort of have this sense of like, you know, you don't just descend into like mean attacks on other people or whatever. Aren't you grateful that God uses messed up people? I'll speak for myself. Um, messed up people like me, maybe a few of you, you go, I'm a little bit messed up as well, right? And that we can say, but God chooses to use very ordinary people to do uh, things that accomplish his purposes despite some of the regrets we might have in life. So our new series is talking about what do you do with regrets? What do you do with guilt? What do you do with some of the challenges that you have in, in your life? And so All right, you're clear for now, I want to start Thank you. by quoting okay, slide him uh, over. a well-known theologian slide him over and, and uh, fly. very famous. Uh, her name is Kathy. Uh, <laughs> As in the comic strip. Anybody remember that if you're really young? But but Kathy at its height was, she was in 1,400 different newspapers around uh, the nation, around the world. And she hails from the Buckeye State. I mean, so she's like, you know, of course, a lot of good things come out of Ohio, right? So this one time and in I'm gonna this fly one episode, she's uh, having a bad day. And she's sitting at home alone with her thoughts. And here are the thoughts that she's thinking. Oh, the things I should have done at work. Things I wish I'd said to Irving. That was her boyfriend, later her husband. Things I promised myself to never do again, but I did anyway. Ways I made myself miserable that I could have avoided. Her look of depression deepens. Things I could have done for my family, my puppy, my friends, my coworkers, my neighbors, my finances, my home, my diet, my closets, and millions of people in need whom I've never met. Kathy had a way of dealing with guilt all the time. In the final frame, Kathy summarizes her plight. Even when I'm not going anywhere, I have 
300 pounds of luggage with me. I think a lot of us can relate to that. That we can look back in life and say, I'm not even going anywhere, but I just feel the weight of stuff that I've done that I regret. It may be a wound that I inflicted on someone that still haunts me, that I go, I can't believe, like words that cut like a knife, like what was I thinking? Maybe we were dishonest in some way. Or it was anger unleashed at someone that we really care about. For a lot of people my age, it's lingering regret that um, they missed a lot when their kids were growing up. It could be guilt over things we didn't do and we wish we had. For some, it's like a thousand different things that you just go, I just all added up together. I just feel heard the voices in my head. And, and for some others, it might be a, one or two particular things they go, not even my own closest friends know about that. They would be shocked. Here's a question. I think we all can agree that we carry around Flash. weight, or at least at some point we have if we... You know, and if we haven't learned how to deal with that, it can be that no one, I can't see your guilt, you can't see my guilt, thank God for that. But we all carry these regrets and this guilt that can feel like we're lugging along and we're weighed down and the voices are just calling on our heads that we're inadequate, that we've messed up and it's condemnation. That's what the Bible calls it. The next slide. And left unaddressed, like if we don't figure out how to deal with that, it devastates our relationship with God, and really it impacts negatively the people around us as well. Some of us have gotten so used to carrying this weight and shame that it almost becomes normal. Wow. And we're just like, what? I, guess, I mean, what else do you do? You got regret, right? I mean, you just deal with it, I guess. But what if we could be free? What if we could say, it's not that I'm dismissing what, what I did was terrible, or I really felt regret over that but I don't own it anymore. What if we could walk out of here today with a reminder Sorry. that I don't have to carry that luggage anymore of guilt? I want us to look at that today because that is the wonder three left of what start. God okay, has thanks. done for us. So Fly we're gonna out. check out the gospel according to- Okay, and we're gonna slide over just a minute. What's the name of the book? Leviticus. Okay, now you Some can you slide over. Leviticus. Leviticus. Leviticus gets a really bad rap. But if you have your paper Bible or you got your phone and you can turn with me to Leviticus chapter 13, the name of the book comes from the tribe of the Levites, who were the tribe of, had all the religious duties and, and it tells, you know, the sort of the protocol for what they're supposed to be doing. And we just finished reading the book of Leviticus in our Bible reading there called The Full Story. And uh, some of you might go, I was supposed to finish it, but I didn't. actually, the road of Bible reading plans is littered with people who never made it past Leviticus, right? And today, I would like us to be able to say, how do you interpret that book? Because a lot of times you read through it and you go, it's sort of harsh, a lot of laws, it's sort of confusing, it feels totally I'm just going to leave this We're up like, until the signpost what? Like, what is this okay. so we about? don't have to play ping pong. And why are there so many things we don't even okay. follow in it? Which, we're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks. But it can seem sort of boring or harsh. Or So what's the key to interpreting the book? Here it is. Here it is. Ready? Leviticus is not a destination. It's a signpost. It's a nice. signpost. Did you say that word with me? Ready? Signpost. signpost. <laughs> it's a signpost that points ahead signpost. to something that would happen 1,500 years later that would absolutely rock the world in a really positive way. Leviticus is a signpost. It answers take that a down? number Wait a second. He talks oh. about sacrifices Questions and blood. Gotcha. Tells us about the history of things, like why were I sacrifices needed. There we Leviticus go. tells us why. Why is there so much blood? Why is blood needed in forgiveness? We find the answer in Leviticus. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm taking it down. Remember when Jesus died Free and he's, he, he breathes his last, says, it is finished, and he takes his final breath, and the curtain of the temple is torn in two from top All right, to Jeff, ready to? Take. That's in Leviticus. Or how about the phrase scapegoat? Anybody say, oh, I was a scapegoat. I was, you know where that word finds its origin? In the book of Leviticus. We're going to see how. 
at all points, all of these things Reminds point the forward part in to the Jesus. Movie. In fact, Jesus himself yes. uh, saw it that way. And he's, at one occasion, he's talking to these two guys the very day that Jesus comes back to life. And he's walking on this road to a town called Emmaus. And uh, he catches up with these two guys. They don't recognize him. Maybe it was dark or maybe this were like, Thanks, Jeff. you know, Jesus is dead. Or the fact maybe is that God just didn't want them to see at first. But anyhow, they, they're telling them about it. Jesus died and all the rest. And, and Jesus begins I'm waiting for to a talk pause. To them about the Old Testament scriptures. And here's what it says in Luke chapter 24. And beginning but with Moses and all the prophets. He did not pause. That is the first five books of the Bible. That's Moses. All the prophets. That's the rest of the Old Testament. He explained to them what was said in all the scriptures. You're clear for now, Jeff. Thank himself. you. And that includes Leviticus. Jesus saying, hey, guys, remember in Leviticus, all of the stuff about sacrifices? I was talking about me. I was a signpost pointing ahead Three to, left to in me. A row. All right. You know what's interesting is in uh, all right, yeah. today's church, We're Leviticus push it over in a little bit. is like the last book we turn to. In when fact, he I've talks never about Lorraine a series and on Leviticus. But in some of Jewish resources. synagogues, it's the first Barbara. book that children are taught. And so to correct... Our mistake, I'm beginning today, I wanted to announce, just with excitement, a 52-week series. No, I'm just teasing. We're not, no, no, we're not going to do that. Not at all. We're going to do a few weeks in this book and just say, let's highlight a few themes and to see how do you handle the guilt that can weigh you down in life? How, how do you deal with this, this, all this baggage of stuff that can hold you back in your relationship with God? So I'm glad you're here, and uh, as we dig in... And I uh, just want to let you know that uh, the app, the Grace app, is going to have some extra resources uh, oh, go ahead and about slide. this series. Slide. I think it's the first time we're doing this, but Do they're going to be slide. downloading some things tomorrow night. And you see at the top right there, it says Clean. That's the new series uh, and resources. And there's going to be some, like, study guides and prayers and other things. And you'll find the message notes there. In fact, that's always available. A few thousand people have downloaded that. And uh, you'll see the fill in notes at the bottom right there for the message today <laughs> and the weekly bulletin, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the ways to catch the themes of Leviticus is to see words that appear over and over again in the book. In fact, the words you see on the screen here and, and, uh, and right there are words that are mentioned in Leviticus more than they're mentioned in any other book in the Bible. In fact, some of those words are mentioned more in Leviticus than all the other books of the Bible combined. And so, for instance, the word clean is mentioned 57 times in Leviticus. Blood is mentioned 65 times. I could have added guilt mentioned 49 times in Leviticus, more than any other book. Because the theme here is how do we get rid of the guilt that harasses us, that we have a God is holy and we're not, and there's this big chasm between us. How do we overcome that? And that's what we're going to see today, and it really is... To me, just a reminder the next one that is a third, we right? have yes. such okay. amazing news. Before we look at Leviticus 16, just one more slide. It's the flow of Leviticus. It sort of is the outline. It's in your notes that maybe you got on your way in. You'll find them on the app as well. But you'll see how the book begins there, the lower left side, uh, with rituals, chapters 1 to 7. We're going to see today the five different kinds of offerings. And then it goes up, and there are some instructions for priests in chapters 8 to 10. And then ritual purity, some things that we go, that's the really confusing part of Leviticus, and why don't we follow those things anymore? We're going to talk about that. It's not just because we don't like it. It's because, well, we'll see uh, why we don't. It's because the New Testament gives us freedom from that. And then the Day of Atonement, and then you come back to purity again, then priests, and then the rituals down at the bottom. But today we're going to focus on that top part. Right at the center of the book is this Day of Atonement. All right, Atonement. Yeah, I'm taking it down. In Hebrew, it is Yom Kippur. Yom is day. Kippur is atonement, covering, ransom. And it was this one day a year happening that was this huge event when forgiveness was provided. And it was an elaborate series of steps that you had to follow just right. And if you didn't, look what happens beginning with verse 2 here in Leviticus right. chapter 16. It says this, the Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron, that he is not to come whenever he chooses into the most holy place. That's like the most inner sanctum of the tabernacle behind the curtain in front of the atonement cover on the ark, ark of the covenant, or else he will what? Serious stuff, right? God is holy and we're not. 
For I will appear in the cloud over the atonement cover, and this is how Aaron is to enter the most holy place. He must first bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. And it wasn't just for his own sin. Everyone was guilty. It was like a giant infection that was pervasive. In fact, in, back in Leviticus 4, uh, verse 27, we read this. It says, If any of the common people Next sin by violating one of the Lord's commands, okay. but third. they don't realize it, they're still guilty. You know what that means? If before I talked about luggage... And we're going to go to the side in a minute. I'm just going to be transparent here. Just in a minute. But if you're like, I don't feel that at all. I have never felt guilt. Like, I feel awesome. I don't think I've ever done anything wrong. That's when he talks wrong. about the tabernacle. This is talking about you here. You're guilty. You're just not aware of it. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, it says, For all have what? Sin. Sin. We've all messed up. We all have regret and guilt. And we all fall short of God's standard is glory and and so back in that day uh, unless your guilt was taken care of you couldn't experience God and so the question for them and for us is how do you get free from the guilt and shame that weigh us down All right. that God is holy and I'm not and if I can't bridge that gap like I'm never going to experience the presence of God and his welcome and be part of his family, which is what I was made for. You can enjoy certain aspects of life, but until you have a relationship with God, the Bible says Who we were that? made by him and we were made for him. That's a big yawn. And until I'm in relationship with God, even my greatest accomplishments are just going to have a sense of like, that was good, but it feels still sort of empty. Like what's, what else is there? So how do we get to know God? You know, if we even see where the book of Leviticus comes in the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch, five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, just before Leviticus is the book of Exodus. And Exodus ends with all this elaborate okay, instruction and, um, and then construction of the tabernacle, this ornate Why? tent that was Why? right in the center of Israel. You see a picture of it right there. And that's where the presence of God was located. I want to read the last five verses of Exodus, and okay. I want you to see I'm where take this is down. Moses okay. in this description. Okay, fly out, recenter. Okay. Here's what it says, last five verses. If you're following along, Exodus chapter 40, verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could no longer enter the tabernacle because the cloud had settled down over it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Now, whenever the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out on their journey following it. But if the cloud did not rise, they remained there where they were until it lifted. The cloud of the Lord hovered over the tabernacle during the day. And at night, this was quite a scene, fire glowed inside the cloud so the whole family of Israel could see it. This continued Next through all full their screen. journeys. All what right. a sight. Taking it, down. it might have been like this. What? Right in the middle of the camp, you have the tabernacle there, and you're like, what is that in the background? Scholars say that there was probably two million people in Israel at that time. Imagine going to Mohican State Park, and there's two million people gathered. That's what the, all those, they're, they're by tribes all the way around the tabernacle, right at the center is this presence of God. Right. And where is Moses? Inside or outside? Outside. That's how Exodus ends. The book just after Leviticus is the book of Numbers. The very first verse of Numbers, look what it says. Where is Moses now? The Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting, the tabernacle in the desert of Sinai, on the first day of the second month. So here's the question. How does Moses get from the outside to the inside? How does he go from the place of I'm not able to do it to I'm able to do it? That is the book of Leviticus. How can you and I experience the next one a lower? and be welcome in no. God's uh, yes, presence? They're How do we deal okay. with failures three, in our lives three. and sin okay. so that we can be forgiven and know God personally? Summary, you brought an offering. You brought an offering. Oh, that was fly. God's plan. So back in Leviticus chapter 4 again, here's what it says. It says this, if someone brings a lamb as their sin offering 
In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the sin they have committed, and they will be what? Forgiven. What did they bring? They brought a lamb. Remember that. We're going to come back to that. Here's the point. It was all about forgiveness. God designed us for friendship with him. Next. And so he Five graciously left. removed okay. anything that comes between us, guilt, to be removed. And so the first seven chapters, if you page through the first seven chapters out, of Leviticus, we're gonna go slide over. you're going to see that it's all about these sacrifices. There's five kinds uh, of sacrifices. We saw them earlier. I'll just go through these again. You'll see them on the screen. The first three were ways of saying thank you to God. You had the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the peace offering. And there's a phrase that keeps on being repeated. It was an aroma pleasing to the Lord. It was like, God, we're just, we want to do something to let you know we honor you, we thank you, God, we love you. The next two sacrifices, the sin offering and the guilt offering, were ways of saying, I'm sorry, receiving forgiveness. It was the way that God was able to get rid of evil without getting rid of us. Let me say that again. A sacrifice was a way for God to get rid of evil without getting rid of us. And this is where sacrifices came in. They were substitutes. Okay, slide back over. It was a way for Israel to know with confidence that they could live in God's presence. They had peace. They, they didn't have to fear that they were going to be struck down. They were forgiven. And it was all because when they brought a sacrifice, God said... It's that animal's blood for yours. Their life for your life. Okay, that was the last of the left. It wasn't order. something okay. that people achieved. It was something they what? The rest are lower they received. thirds. They received forgiveness from God. And that becomes the gospel all the way through, that we, we can't earn our forgiveness. We can't try hard enough to somehow overcome our guilt. We just go, God, we receive from you... Uh, this gift of forgiveness. There's a lot more we could say on that. But let me just say again, Leviticus is a what? It's a signpost pointing forward. And the people in that day would have wondered, they would have said, what will it be like when God someday deals with our sin once for all? What did they bring for a sacrifice? Many times a lamb, right? Fast forward 1,500 years from Leviticus. 1,500 years to a little town in Israel called Bethlehem. And there's a little boy who's born in a stable, and his parents are told, you'll name him Jesus because he'll save his people from what? From their sins. He grows up. John the Baptist sees him, and he goes, look, there's the, the, what? the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Is this the next one? Ready you see how Leviticus was a signpost pointing forward to a lamb who would one day come I and would be the there. ultimate sacrifice well, talks about being about that would do with our sin and our guilt. Friends, Jesus rocked the world in the best way possible. Mm, here we go. I mean, he did. It was just, it was incredible what he did. And here's what I want us to see. If Leviticus is a signpost pointing forward to this lamb of God, all right, you're clear Why for is the Thank forgiveness you. of Jesus Can we have the next slide? and his sacrifice so much what? better than what happened in Leviticus? I want us to, if you look at your notes, if you have those, either on the app or maybe you got the piece of paper on the way in, I want us to just do a quick compare and contrast, but let me just read the New Testament equivalent of Leviticus. You have Leviticus in the Old Testament, sort of its twin book in the New Testament is the book of Hebrews, sort of like the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament, the twin is sort of the book of James. And so, and there's a number of, uh, you know, parallels like that. But let me just read one, ch uh, couple of verses from Hebrews chapter 9. And, and here's what it says, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people, so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance, that's heaven, that God has promised them, for Christ died to set them free, 
from the penalty of the sins they had committed. It's comparing and saying, this is what happened, and this is so much better. How much more Jesus? So let's do a quick compare and contrast between Leviticus and the sacrifice of Jesus. Again, you'll see this in your notes. Back then, the place where you went for your forgiveness and you offered a sacrifice was the tabernacle, right? It was the picture we saw earlier, and you went, and they had this altar outside, so and it was sorry. sort of a holy place. Today, <laughs> what do we do today? We look back Contagious. at what happened on a hill called what? Calvary, outside the city of Jerusalem. <laughs> oh, it's a place sorry, you can still happened. visit today. And, and it's the place where the greatest act of forgiveness, the most amazing gift ever, was given. Not a holy building, but a hill. Next, in Leviticus, the high priest would carefully enter the most holy places, inner sanctum of the tabernacle, on your behalf, sort of by proxy. And the person was always a Levite, a son of Aaron, which meant that the person was always a sinner. So they had to seek forgiveness for their own stuff first. Uh, you'll see in back in Leviticus chapter 16 how they, how they did it and the Day of Atonement. It, it says this, Aaron is to offer the bull for his own sin, verse 6, um, offering to make atonement for himself and his household. That was then. Today, our high priest, um, Jesus, the Son of God, is sinless, right? The verse at the top of your notes from 2 Corinthians 5 says this, God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. In other words, Jesus never messed up, which means that instead of sa offering a sacrifice for his own sin, he, he could just go in and say, I'm offering a sacrifice for Jonathan, for Alyssa, uh, for, for Bob, for Jermaine. I'm, I'm offering a sacrifice for next. The old system, you didn't know the high priest who would be because from year to year, from one Yom Kippur to the next Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, you didn't know who was, you know, the priest was going to die in between. But you come to Jesus, and Jesus offers his own life. Like, he is the sacrifice and the priest, and he offers himself, and then three days later he comes back to life, and so he is our priest for how long? For Forever, right? He, we always know it's, it's Jesus. Who is your? He, it's Jesus is the answer um, for all of the, you know, the problems and the guilt in, in my life. Another contrast: in the old way to release the heavy luggage of guilt, the priest would go in on your behalf, and they would go into this, um, you know, most holy place, and, and they would take a bowl, and the bowl was filled with what? With blood. And you go. So much blood. I've asked that question myself, and I go, I don't know. At some point, I go, He's God, and I'm not, right? But there was something about sin that brought death. And blood was a way to show that something had died to cover, to be an atonement for sin. So in the book of Leviticus and in the book of Hebrews, it says, Without the shedding of what? The blood, there's no, no forgiveness. And so the priest would take oh, that's a slide bowl 40. of blood and then they would sprinkle it all. I mean, you skipped the verse. Over. He said, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. That's 40. I thought he was getting ready to read it. He just said it. He, he comes and he says, I'm not just bringing the blood of an animal, but he stretches out his arm on the cross. And he sheds his blood. He may go back to it. For you and for me. And it's this amazing gift. And he gives his life so that you and I could be free. God doesn't ask the high priest to bring a vial of tears. He doesn't ask for, like, sweaty, you know, rags from working out. In other words, it wasn't how sorry you were. You could cry over your sins from here until the end of your life. And all of those tears can't pay for what you've done wrong. Or you could try to sweat it out and say, I'm just going to work harder. And I, if I can just be good enough and do as many good deeds as possible, maybe I can find my forgiveness. No, 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 no. Only what would do? Only, only blood. That's why we sing so often about the blood. Why? Because 
It was you can a load sacrifice. The next slide. It was their life for your life, their blood for your blood. And here was the downside of the Why? old system. The sacrifices never stopped, right? Because they were never ultimately effective. It was just a temporary cleansing. And so you had to sacrifice over and over and over and over again. And I want to say today, thank God that was just a shadow of something far better to come, right? That Jesus would come and he'd be a final sacrifice, a better sacrifice. And Jesus, as the Lamb of God, would mark the end of all animal sacrifices. No longer do you have to slaughter countless animals and sprinkle their blood. Because here's what we read about Jesus, the new way in Hebrews chapter 7, it says this. Fine. Unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They did this first for their own sins and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus did this, what? Once for all, when he offered himself as a sacrifice for the people's sins. I love that. Once for all. It's a done deal. I'm innocent today. Right? Not because I've never messed up. Not because I've never experienced guilt, but simply because okay. Jesus' blood was shed for me. Right? I mean, that's just, friends, that is the best gift ever. Confidence that our sins are washed away, our guilt can be removed, and we no longer have to listen to the voice of condemnation. Do I still have guilty voices coming in my head? Yes, but I can say, you know what? I can just speak to the enemy, whoever it is, and say, I transferred my guilt to Jesus. It's gone. My sins have been removed completely. It's a sacrifice that's so much better. Friends, think about this. You didn't have to carry a lamb into church this morning. Praise God for that, right? You didn't have to carry a bowl of blood. Imagine that, right? We didn't, we didn't have to do that. You didn't have to go through a priest to find your forgiveness. You don't have to come and do confession to me. You can go directly to God. You don't have to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. You just come to Jesus and say, Jesus, when you died, you died in my place, and that was a sacrifice that was once what? For all, once for all. Friends, we have it so much better, do we not? During Old Testament times on a festival day in Jerusalem, the noise and the smell of sacrifice. I mean, just sort of picture this. All the animals and the blood and were just these vivid reminders of the gulf between God and his people, that he's holy and we're not. And we just go, but, and then Jesus. Jesus goes to Calvary and everything changes for the better, right? His death removes my guilt. His blood cares for all my sin forever. Friends, we're free, right? We're free. We know our past. We know our past. If, if, if you have any sense of, of just clarity about your past, you go, I know the things that bring me like the luggage and the shame and the regret and all the rest, but I also know the one who shed his blood so all that can be gone. Amen. I mean, just what a Savior we have. Here's my question. Do you know him? Have you trusted him? Have you transferred your stuff onto him and said, Jesus, when you died, you died for me? We're going to listen to a couple of stories here in two minutes from people whose right, sins have two been minutes. covered. And <laughs> as we listen... Stand by. It might be time for you just to say again, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you did for me that I live now and not then. Thank you for being a once for all sacrifice. Maybe for you, it's time to say, Lord, I've never really dealt with my guilt in that way. I've been trying to work harder. I've just been sorrowful. And I realize now the only way that I'm going to be free is to accept your sacrifice and to receive your forgiveness. I do that today. Let's take a listen. Stand by. And see how these people Three, have been set free. Three, two, one, fire. If only I could go back and change some things. Set things straight. I wish I had a do-over. I've made choices. I've lost out. I wish a thousand times I could go back and try again. It's hard.
hard not to imagine what might have been. If I had just stopped to think. If I had just done as I was told. If I hadn't thought I knew it all. Why didn't I just take a few deep breaths? Took one second to listen. Maybe my life would be better. Maybe there wouldn't be such a high price to pay. Things would be different now. I wouldn't have so many regrets. But is everything lost? Can I just get a do-over? Is there a way back to new beginnings? Because regret can mean a new beginning. When it's given to the one who produces a repentance. A repentance that delivers me from my grief. The one who takes my mistakes. And somehow redeems me through them. Who tells me I'm not the sum total of all my regrets? Who tells me not to look back? Because there's nothing there to see. I am not my mistakes. He is faithful and just to forgive me. I just have to ask him. And then I can look straight forward. Forget what is behind me. And strain towards what is ahead. And walk away with all regrets erased by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Every day I'm given a clean slate. A clean slate? I get a clean slate. Alright, come on out to camera five first. Inside. Who's standing here when I respond? Three, two, one. Ready, four. Ready to tell. Resolve. Before the throne of God. Resolve one. Before the throne of God above. Have a strong and perfect All right, hang on, Jeff. I'll use you next. A great high priest whose name is love. Whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven. Stands. No tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tells me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, take four.
Super glad that you came today. If you'd like to have someone pray with you, there'll be a prayer team down here. You can come on down after the service and whatever you'd like to talk to the Lord about, they'd be happy to talk to him with you. Uh, if you're new, I hope you're glad you came today. If you'd stop by the welcome desk on your way out, we have a little gift for you. And ladies, hope to see you tomorrow night at 7. Hey, out of the welcome desk is a little book that looks like this called Steps to Peace with God. Free little booklet. If you're wondering, how do I... <laughs> make what we talked about today true in my own life. This book will actually explain that real briefly, lead you in a prayer, and uh, you're welcome to pick one up on your way out. And now from John's first letter, we read this in chapter 1. If we confess our sins, God is what? Faithful and just. And will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from how much unrighteousness? All of it. All of it. Go free today. Let the baggage be left behind and be free in Jesus because his blood counts for you. Amen. We love you, Grace. Yes. We'll see you. Bye, Luke. Everybody did a great job. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you great too. job, everybody. Bye Thank bye. you. Have a good see you week. tomorrow, Heidi. Yes.